Live? Are we live? We are live. All right. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi there. My name is Luke, and I will be your teacher for this live class. This live English class. English learners, welcome. Non-English learners, get out. Or, or stay, if you really want to. It's up to you. I don't care. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be doing a couple things. We're going to be doing an English q and I'll be answering your questions, if you have any. If you don't, <laughs> I won't answer any of them, because there are none. And we'll also be talking about and looking at some music, and we'll see if we can learn some English from that or not, which is a very important or not. Now, I've talked about that a little bit before, but we'll get into it and see what we can learn, see what we can figure out and what we can um, pick up from music. I think it's interesting. Let's see what happens. Anyway, welcome, welcome. I see so we have some people in the, uh, in the uh, chat already, which is great news. Virtual hug. Thanks. We have Mohammed from Morocco and Luba's here and Karina's here. Yippity doo da. That's good news. All good. So it's good to have you guys here. Uh, get your questions ready, of course. And as is customary for me at the start, I got to do the thing. If you guys haven't already, make sure that, and I would really appreciate it, it would mean a lot to me. If you don't do anything else, great. But if you do one thing, hit the like button. It's what matters most. No, it's not what matters most, but it's up there. And also, make sure you guys, if you want to see future live lessons, future videos from the channel, make sure you subscribe. There should be a red button that says subscribe. Pretty easy to find. And that's, of course, only if you want to see future videos and lessons. And last thing, if you haven't already and you're interested in learning English more seriously, then check out my courses, full English courses, in the links in the description. Now, I want to say one thing quickly about the courses, just because it's time-sensitive before we get into the stuff we're going to talk about today. I mentioned in the last live class that we're doing, a sp there's a special sale happening with the courses. I actually made a mistake. And... I made the sale. I'm not this is not a lie. This is honest. I made the sale too too cheap. And I can't undo it. Now the coupon is out there, right? And I can't undo it. I made 20. There are still about 10 left. And it's my mistake, right? That I I I I I've, I've never sold my courses for that cheap before as one package. I checked it and I realized, oh my god, that's ridiculous. Oops, I made a big mistake, uh, and I, so I'll never do it again. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, truly and honestly, if you are interested and or have been interested in my courses and have been thinking about, mm, maybe I'll wait until they're on sale, they will never be cheaper than now. I can promise that because they're only cheap now because I made a mistake. I didn't realize they were that much off. So oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so you guys can uh, you guys can check that out if you're interested. Uh, it's in the link in the description. There's a discount coupon there. You can check it out. It's uh, yeah. It's in the link. It'll expire by the way in I think two or three days. Uh, soon. I, I can't remember the exact expiration. Anyway. Okay. So I think we can get started. We have Posh Jasper here. All three people check that out. Yeah. Well, that wouldn't be bad. <laughs> Emily, most people watching are on uh, YouTube, not Facebook, but cool. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. We are on YouTube, we're on Facebook, and we're also on Twitch as well, and Periscope, oddly enough. Mohammed says, what's the difference between I used to wake up and I am used to waking up early? Uh, also, I'm getting used to waking up early. Thank you in advance. Hmm, okay. Okay. Hey, Paulson's here. Great. Great. Cool, cool. So, uh, I just want to read this comment from Pasho Jesshopper. Hi, can you give your advice to my friend Tarquin? He is recently came out as a... 
Dyson something something cordless vacuum cleaner with attachable suction devices for hard countertops and carpets. He came out as this after he got electronic hair. Oh my goodness. Can I block people? I almost read that whole comment. It would have been funny, I guess, to read the whole thing. Those of you on, on those two people of you on Twitch can go ahead and read it, I guess. But I don't think I have on my my panel here the ability to block people, especially not from Twitch, because I'm not logged into Twitch. So have at it, Pasho Jasper. Go crazy. Nothing I can do about it for now. Hello from Algeria. Hello, hello. Uh, hello, teacher. It's uh, 1 a.m. time to sleep, but you are online. Yeah, but it's not 1 a.m. for me. It's 1 a.m. for you. It is 4 p.m. for me. Pretty late, though, for me to do live streams. I apologize for being on so late. It is not the ideal time. Absolutely. Hello from Brazil. Hello, hello. Okay, so let's, let's before we get into any of the questions you guys have, and I'm glad you have them, that's awesome. Before we get into any of that stuff, I want to talk about something specifically uh, today. I want to show you something, and I want to talk about something that I want to show you. Okay, so what is it? Well, you may have seen recently a video that I did about whether or not it's a good idea to learn English from music. And I had said in that video, no, it's not. And I gave some examples. And I still think that. But I want to say it in a different way. I want to say instead, it's not a bad idea to learn English from music. It's just that I personally don't think it's the best method. In fact, I think that there are 10 or 20 other better ways to do it than listening to songs, maybe even more than that. Okay, that's my opinion. And I'm going to explain a little bit about why I have that opinion, and we're going to actually look at a song that's popular that may either support my opinion or not, and I'll let you decide. And that's kind of the point. I want you to decide for yourself if it's useful or not, okay? So when I say, I don't think it's great, I have my reasons, it might be useful to you. And I've talked with people who have said to me, music and lyrics are the things that got me into learning English. That's one of the things I wanted to study first, picking out the meaning of the lyrics, right? And so what can I say against that? If that works for you and you really like it and that's your doorway or your window into the language, who am I to say, you cannot do that? What I am trying to say is, as a person with his opinion, I don't think it's even close to the best way. And in fact, I, I think English could, or rather English songs, could mislead you in a lot of ways. All right. So do I have an example? Yes. Yes, I do. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a song that's popular right now. We're going to look at a small piece of it. And I apologize if it offends you. There are some bad words in it. If you're offended by bad words, then you probably shouldn't be watching this video. This is the channel that did a video on the F word and how to use it. In fact, two videos. So <laughs> here you are. Now, I want to look at it because I want to explore this question. Can we learn English from music? Should we learn English from music? And I want you to decide that for yourself after we get through this, okay? So we're going to look at two clips. I'm going to show you the first, then we'll talk about it a little bit, and then I'm going to show you the second, and we'll talk about that one a little bit. Very short, very quick. So let's take a, uh, let's take a quick look at the first section of a song by a musician who you may know, or you may have seen recently, named Takashi69, okay? Very sort of hot artist right now for a lot of different reasons, especially in the last several weeks. Maybe one of those artists who goes like this and then goes like this. Who knows? I think he just got out of jail. <laughs> but uh, it, interesting song, and the song's kind of stuck in my head, even though I don't usually listen to, to that type of music all the time. Well, sometimes I do. It's kind of stuck in my head. So let's look at that piece, and then we'll get into it. Here we go. Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb? It 
it is catchy, right? That piece is catchy. I don't know if you caught the lyrics, but that's what I want to talk about. I think it's a perfect example, okay? Now, the lyrics. Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb? Now, this is either great genius or just dumb lyrics. It's hard to, it's hard to say. But when, it, when we're making music, the project is not to only express something through words. The project is to give people a feeling, to make people feel something through the words and through the melody, through the beat, through the bass, all of that, right? And so when we hear, are you dumb, stupid, or dumb, immediately we think, well, that this is the worst lyrics I've ever heard in my life because dumb and stupid and dumb mean the same thing. So not only is he saying dumb twice, which you're not supposed to do in song lyrics, you're not supposed to use the same word to rhyme, right, with your previous word. <laughs> He's also saying another third word in the middle, which is stupid, which means the same thing, right? Are you dumb, stupid, same meaning as dumb, or dumb, same meaning. Dumb again repeated after the first one. So <laughs> the initial response is, what? <laughs> what terrible lyrics. But then we have to remember, what's the purpose of music? What if this is genius? What if he's trying to point out something else or create a different kind of feeling in this song? It's certainly stuck in my head. It was stuck in my head yesterday, so there's got to be something to it. It's an extremely popular song, so there's got to be something to it. But again, the question is, is it good for learning English? Should we use it as a language learning tool? Now, I just want to mention a couple of quick things before we answer, or at least try to answer, that question. I want to look at how we, maybe, some ways that we can express this if we wanted to do it correctly. We might say, are you stupid? That's fine. Are you stupid? We wouldn't say, are you stupid or dumb, because those two things mean the same thing. We could say, are you nuts? Nuts means crazy. Are you crazy? Are you nuts? This is totally normal, totally common. So if we're going to sort of pick out the thing from this little section of the song that actually makes sense and is actually common, those are the things that we could pick out. We could say, if we wanted to use an or, we could say, are you crazy or just dumb? That's a very common expression. Nuts means crazy, so we could say, are you nuts or just a moron? Again, we can use or here because we're expressing two different things. The kind of unique, maybe strange thing about this particular, uh, this particular song is that he's saying three things, two of them are exactly the same, and all of them have the same meaning. Again, it's either genius, or it's very dumb, or stupid, or dumb. Now let's look at the other piece of it, and then we'll get into this question of whether or not this is a good tool for learning. So let's look at the second and final section of the same song. Here we go. You're mad, I'm back. Big mad, he's mad, she's mad, big fat. Ha ha, don't care, stay mad. Ah ha, ah ha, ah ha, ha ha, bitch, I'm loving because you big mad. See it in your face, cry, baby, but you big sad. All right. This would, I think this is the one that people are listening to. I don't know if you ever look at uh, TikTok. So if you ever look at TikTok, this is something that you'll see all the time now on TikTok. People are dancing to this or doing actions to this piece of this song. It seems pretty popular. Okay. Now, what's wrong with this one? Well, again, I can't say there's anything wrong with it because it's stuck in my head. So it's good. It must be interesting music if it's stuck in my head. Well, not necessarily, but... Anyway, it's there, and it's popular, and everyone's copying it, so it's new. It's something. Maybe that's the purpose of music, so maybe that's great. Now, let's look at, though, the, the English here. We hear a couple things. We hear big mad, big sad. Big, mag and, big mad and big sad are sort of the two common elements of this that we hear several times. Several times we hear big mad, big sad. Now, if we were saying, I'm learning English from this, then we would have to say, this song is not good. Because if you start saying, I'm big mad, I'm, I'm big mad about what you did to my coffee. I'm big sad about you breaking up with me. I'm big sad about it. What he's saying is very, very sad, very, very mad. Now, what I can't say is that he shouldn't say that. Because he's a musician. He can do whatever he wants. And again, music is music. Music is not literature. Music is not speaking. Music is music. There are no rules. You can do whatever you want. 
the effect is what you're trying to get. The emotion, the mood, the feeling is what you're trying to express, right? So maybe don't learn English from this part, but at the same time, sort of relax and enjoy it, right? Now let's see if we can actually pick out some meaning like we did for the previous part. How about this? If we wanted to say mad, we might say instead upset, furious, frustrated, beside myself, irate. Now, this is learning English, right? Mad and sad are very simple words, very simple words. If we read a novel or some other way to learn or get English, maybe videos or TED Talks, we get more diversity. We hear these things in sentences. If we hear the word upset, we learn it in a sentence. If we hear furious, we maybe see it in a couple of different sentences. Frustrated. These are all different shades of mad. Irate means very mad. Beside myself with rage or anger means very, very angry, very mad, right? Frustrated means a kind of mad, but in a way that's sort of slow and long term because I did something wrong, usually. Furious is like irate, very, very angry. Upset is a kind of mix between sadness and anger, or it could be any possible, any possible reason, right? So we could pick these out as variations of mad and then we could say maybe we have learned from this song because I am talking about it here we are looking at clips from it so maybe we're maybe we're learning from music I, I don't know I really I don't know what's the right approach to this here we are talking about this song in this video and so we could say ironically maybe we are learning English from music which is according to me not a good thing to do but it is which the thing which I am doing. <laughs> so you decide for yourself, as I said, you decide for yourself. Now, is big mad even acceptable to communicate big mad to anybody? Can we say that? Uh, no, no, we can't say that. Generally, people will not understand. Right? We could say very mad, we could say very mad, I could, could say very sad, really sad, very sad. You can use those words. But it's good to know the variations as well. Now, how about sad? Can we look at variations of sad? Yeah. Upset again. Now, upset is a special one because it could be more focused on the anger side or the sadness side. And it could kind of go either way depending on the situation. I'm really upset, <laughs> crying, or ah, I'm really upset, angry. That word is quite unique. Down is kind of a slow, depressed sadness. I'm just I'm not very happy today. Kind of down, heartbroken. Maybe after someone dies, or maybe after someone breaks up with you, or a divorce, something like that. Sorrow, sorrowful is very uh, poetic, something you would see in poetry or literature. We don't often use the word sorrowful, sorrowful for ourselves. We often use it to describe other people. We don't say, I'm sorrowful. That sounds weird. And then hurt is usually what someone does to us. Some action that someone takes that makes us feel bad, makes us feel sad, big sad even, we could say that we're hurt. Okay, so what can we say about all this? Well, again, I want you to decide that for yourself. I think reading books, watching videos, watching documentaries, watching TED Talks, listening to the news, listening to podcasts, playing video games. I think all of these things, and many other things, are better tools for learning English than music. All right? But if it happens to be the thing that you love to do, that you like to study lyrics and understand them, then I think it could be a good tool if you're enthusiastic about that, but I would suggest that instead of just copying immediately what they say in the song and going to Starbucks and saying, oh, you spelled my name wrong on my cup, I'm big mad about that, probably not. Not the best thing to learn, right now anyway, maybe in 20 years that will be, that will be normal. If Takashi 69 is a, is a cultural icon and changes the language, then maybe. Maybe we'll all be saying big sad someday. I don't know. But if you're studying the lyrics because you like to do that and then you use that as a jumping off point, like we've kind of done here, to say, what are some variations of this? What are some other ways that I could say big sad, distraught, upset? There are so many, 
so many that we could talk about that, that I didn't even show you here. There are many. Use it as a beginning point of exploration. Then I think it could be good. The, the important thing there is that you have enthusiasm about it. So if you have enthusiasm for it, if you're excited for it, then yeah, I would say go ahead. If you want to say that music is as good as music and documentaries are the same in terms of level of quality content that you can get, that you can learn from directly, then I would say probably not. Probably not. Because you have to do a lot more work with music to try to make it understandable. Most songs are very poetic. They don't follow the rules. They don't sound like normal speech. Almost any music that you hear is going to sound weird if you just spoke it, right? It's different. Music is a different thing. It's not spoken communication, okay? So you just have to use it in the right way. That's my opinion. And again, ironically, here I am talking about how I don't think music is a good tool using music as a tool for teaching English and teaching phrases about happiness or sadness, rather, being mad, right? And, and, and are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you stupid? Variations of that, okay? So that's a bit ironic. I recognize that. It is what it is. You decide for yourself. I'd like to get your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments what you think about learning English through music. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Do you do it? Do you not do it? Why? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, guys, make sure you hit the like button. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe or follow. And also, check out my full courses in the links in the description. All right. So I don't know what you guys think about that, but um, that song has been stuck in my head and I've been thinking about it and wondering, you know, is this good? Is this a good way to learn? By the way, you might be thinking, hey, wait a second. Is Luke drinking tea? Uh, the joke's on you. It's coffee with a tea bag in it. <laughs> I agree if you're a teacher, but when I understand the lyrics of the music, it's fascinating. Okay, so if you like that, I would just use it as a beginning point, as an exploration, right? As an exploration, beginning of an exploration. Luke, why it? Why does Takashi 69 say the N-word in his lyrics? Is he allowed? That's a very interesting question, right? So here you have uh, a guy who's not black using the N-word in his music, whereas usually you would see uh, that word used often in hip-hop music that is, uh, that is made by black people, and that's sort of something that they can do, but which is not usually acceptable for anyone else to do, right? And it's a good question. And I don't think I am qualified to answer it. I don't think I, don't think I, I am a, 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 a qualified decision maker in this case. It's not sort of, it's sort of like, um, well, some things, some things I think are best decided by, not necessarily one person, but best decided by or judged by the group that, those things are relevant to, right? So if you ask me about something related specifically to me and the things that I know and the things are, that are relevant to my culture, and by the way, I, I, I don't just mean, let's say, white people because that's a too big a category. I can't, I certainly can't do that. But I mean, let's say me, people from Ohio, New Yorkers, uh, people whose heritage is from England, that, that sort of thing. I might be able to answer some questions about how I feel about this or what I think about that because that's who I am. That's me. And so if you want to ask this question, you can probably ask it to someone who has, I guess, the right to say, well, this is what I think. This is how I feel about it. Not that they're a final judge and decision maker, because no individual is when it comes to culture. But that opinion is probably more relevant than my opinion. Does that make sense? That's just that's my opinion about it. There, there we go again with the irony. My opinion is that I shouldn't have an opinion. 
Uh, but how about English with subtitles? I think it is more interesting than listening to music since we strengthen not only our vocabulary words but also our listening. Yes. So Muhammad says listening with subtitles. It's good to use subtitles if you need them and then eventually take them away. I think that's probably best if you can. But if you can't and you really need them, then use them. Music, though. Mm. Probably better to use TV shows and movies because they have more context and because it's communication and speech rather than for the for the feeling, right? Because if I say zaba daba duba and that gives you a certain feeling or emotion, I've accomplished what music does, <laughs> right? But I haven't communicated anything. At least I don't think so. If zaba zaba duba is a bad word somewhere, then I apologize to the people who use zaba daba duba. Sorry. <laughs> um, can music help someone improve pronunciation? That's that's very subjective. I I again. You're you're listening to something that is inherently tonal. That's automatically going up and down. So if you hear, if you hear a singer going like that, which they do, and they they make weird noises with their mouths that they wouldn't do if they were speaking. Is that a good tool for pronunciation? I think, no, it's not. Well, why do I want to learn how to say, Rrr? why do I want to do that? I want to learn how people talk. So I would say, again, I would say probably not. Probably not. Just my opinion, guys. Jeet says, ironing boards are surfboards that gave up their dreams. Please, could you explain? I guess this is a a uh, joke or something? Jeet says, ironing boards are surfboards that gave up their dreams. So, this is pretty straightforward. Apparently, it's a joke that somebody made at some point. I don't know. I don't know where it's from. But, the basic idea is that somehow, it's cooler to be a surfboard because you're on the water and you're in the waves and you're colorful and it's cool. Surfing is cool. And an ironing board is somehow not a cool thing, right? You just put the ironing board out. It's flat. You iron your clothes on it. We imagine a, a guy before work ironing his shirt, kind of depressed, getting ready for the day. Having his having his coffee. Mm. Not cool, right? Not very cool. At least I don't think it's that cool. So, the joke I think is that an ironing board and a surfboard look similar. So what we're doing here is anthropomorphizing ironing boards and surfboards. Ironing boards and surfboards have no dreams. They have no motivation. They have no desires. They're things. They don't think, they don't feel. We make them for what they do. But if we anthropomorphize, 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 look it up, anthropomb anthrop anthropomorphize things, we give them human characteristics. When we say, oh, look, the tree is so lonely in the middle of the field, the lonely tree. The tree is not lonely. It is alone. It is solitary. Those are descriptive. But it is not lonely, at least as far as I know. Trees don't have this feeling of, oh, gosh, if only, you know, if only I could call someone or, t you know, I don't think that trees have this characteristic. Maybe they do. But I don't speak tree, so how can I know? But what I'm doing there when I describe it that way is I'm imprinting my human opinion onto something and I'm considering it with human characteristics. I'm putting my human char characteristics on it as a description and I'm, I'm thinking of it in that way. I think of the tree as lonely, that lonely old tree who lived, lived on the top of the hill for 35 years before it was cut down by George Washington. Right? And so we're doing the same thing with the surfboard. We're saying that a surfboard has a dream. I want to be a surfboard. This, maybe there's a little baby piece of wood or something or whatever surfboards are made out of. I want to be a surfboard when I grow up. That's amp anthropom yeah. anthropomorphizing. That's anthropomorphizing. <laughs> it's hard to say. A 
thing, a piece of wood, if surfboards are made out of that. Uh, but then it, it fails at life, right? Like a, like a teenager who has a dream to be an actor or an actress, and then they fail at their dream, and then they get a job in an office. Ugh, I failed to be a surfboard. I didn't make it. I didn't do it. I didn't get accepted. So now I have to... Now I have to become an ironing board. That's the idea. So the surfboard, the anthropomorphized surfboard, a wannabe surfboard gave up his or her dream and became an ironing board, which is less cool. That is the idea. That's the point of this joke. Is it a funny joke? Not, not really. I don't think it's that funny, but it's sort of giving, giving ironing boards and surfboards dreams. You guys use ironing boards? Have an iron? You iron it? iron your clothes on it some people use steamers anyway do you think surfboards are that cool i mean maybe we could say i i prefer this analogy an ironing board is a grown-up surfboard so after after the surfboard's career it retires and becomes an ironing board that's more that feels more natural to me an ironing board is a retired surfboard yeah i like that better that's that's luke anthropomorphization of boards anyway hopefully that makes sense guys if you haven't already as i mentioned please if you don't mind hit the like button also subscribe and check out my full courses in the links in the description okay uh, 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 and grab that sale guys it's gonna expire soon it ends soon i put it there by mistake it's too discounted Bad for me, good for you. Bad for me, good for you. Gertie says, if you ask me, probably depends on what kind of English you decided to learn. I'm almost 70 years. I'm trying to learn with an English teacher. Fair enough. Fair enough. What's the difference between alone and lonely? Well... Alone is simply a, a description uh, of one thing not being near other things, sort of like isolated, right? Because you could say that a cactus is alone. Lonely is an emotional characteristic. It talks about the inner feelings of whatever that is, right? So we can't say that a cactus is lonely because either it is and we can't communicate with it so we don't know, or it's a cactus and it can't feel loneliness. It's not capable of that emotion. But it can be alone. It means not near other cactuses. Not near others. That's the difference. That's the difference, uh, Mohammed. It's better to share comments amid thoughts. Can music help someone improve pronunciation? I talked about that one. I use music to study English by lyrics. There are some beautiful words. Some artists put their songs, and I really like them. Some are very poetic. I agree with that. Of course, I agree with that. I don't disagree with that at all. My point was, is it, the, is it in the top 10 of best learning tools? If that's the question, I think the answer is probably no, in my opinion. May says, may you, uh, Mohammed says, may you reply to our opinions? Which opinions? Which opinions am I replying to? Let's see if I've missed any comment, any questions above here. Mm -mm -mm. Sir Luke, tell me about the best grammar book, which is enough to learn. I don't know any grammar books which are good to learn. I haven't I have I have no grammar books to recommend. I'm not sure if grammar books are even the best way to learn grammar and I think probably the answer is no. But that's also somewhat subjective. Let's see what else I have missed here. I'm going to pop up there's this one here, which I missed from earlier from Facebook. Yeah, you're welcome. Sure thing, Mohammed. No problem. 
So Muhammad says, what is the difference between I used to wake up and I am used to waking up early? Or let's just say I'm used to waking up. I am getting used to waking up early or I am getting used to waking up. So I used to wake up. I am used to waking up and I am getting used to waking up. Hmm. These are interesting, right? Now, we have talked about that in the past, but this is somewhat unique because we have this getting one in here. So I like that. So let's talk about this. It's it's actually a good question. By the way, Muhammad, make sure you punctuation. Ah, punctuation. Move the move the period over so there's no space and then one space after. Ah, okay. Next, the answer. So, pretty simply, if we say I am used to something, well, let's start let's start with the first one. Okay. I used to I used to wake up. What does that mean? That means now I don't. But for a period of time in the past, I did. So let's add early to this. I used to wake up early. What does that mean? That means for a period of time in the past, I woke up at 6, 6.30, 5, 5.30, early in the day. And I went out for a run. I used to do it. For a two-year period, I did that. And I really enjoyed it. It felt good. But then things changed with work. I had to start working later in the day. So I had to sleep longer. So now I can't get up at 6.30. Now I can't get up at 5.30. Now I get up at 9.30 because I go to bed at 1 a.m. So I used to do that. I used to get up early. Now I don't. So we're talking about a period of time in the past that is finished. It doesn't mean that you'll never do it again. It just means that it's a period of time. You regularly did something, I used to do it, and now you don't. Now, the next one is, I am used to waking up early. This is interesting. This is about the idea of adjusting to this new routine, this new thing that you started doing. So, when you first started getting up at 5.30, it was very difficult. You would wake up at 5.30 and, uh, I, can't, I can't barely get... Uh, coffee, coffee, coffee. I still feel... Uh, it was very hard for you to adjust to getting up that early. I have to get up at 5.30 every morning. It's terrible, brutal. But, two months later, after doing this, getting up at 5.30 every single day, you adjust yourself. And now, waking up at 5.30, no big deal. Now you don't say, uh, now you get up and you get up and that's it. It's easy. No problem. Not a big deal. I'm up. 5.30. Why? Because I'm used to it. I am used to it. That means I have adjusted, I have adapted, and you could use it for all kinds of different things. I have adapted to this system. I'm used to this system. We're talking about a computer system. I'm used to using Windows. Not oh, uh, Mac OS. I'm used to using Mac OS, not Windows. You can use it for software. You can use it for paint brushes. You can use it for anything. It's so useful. I am used to it. Okay. Now, what about getting used to? The third one. Getting used to. I'm getting used to it. This is very easy. I am getting used to getting up early. Now, you might say, wait, that doesn't sound right. I'm getting used to getting up early. Okay, well, if you don't like how that sounds, it is correct, by the way, then you could say, I'm getting used to waking up early. I am getting used to waking up early. All right, that's fine if you don't want to say, I'm getting used to getting up early, which is correct. But it means that I'm in that two-month period of adjustment. The time from when it's horrible, when I started doing it, to the time when it is tolerable and it, it, it's acceptable. It's not a sudden thing that I'm used to. It's a gradual process. Over this period of two months, I slowly adapted. I got used to it over time. And if I'm in the middle of this process and someone says, hey, how's the thing? I'm getting used to getting up early, getting up at 5.30. It's, uh, it's not too bad now. I'm slowly getting used to it. You're in the process. So I am used to it means I've adjusted. I'm getting used to it 
means I'm on the way, and I used to, totally different meaning, again, means something I did for a period of time in the past, and now I don't. That's it. Hopefully that's clear. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. I would deeply, sincerely, genuinely, honestly appreciate it if you would. Also, don't forget to subscribe or follow and check out my full English courses in the links in the description. Okay? Hopefully that made sense, Mohammed. I can't, don't think I can say it any more clearly than that. Uh, Le Leandro says, Luke, do you already visit Brazil? I've never been to Brazil. I'd like to go someday. Somewhere I'd like to go. I think music is a popular way to to learn because it messes with our emotions. <laughs> messes with is an interesting choice of words there. It, learning music messes with my emotions. Maybe so. Okay. Tantalize and lure. Not sure how useful that is, though. Tantalize is such a rare word, using tantalizing. Uh, tantalize is not usually used, usually as a verb, right, to tantalize. Not very common. Something is tantalizing. It's very appealing or attractive. Uh, it could be uh, a, an offer uh, that maybe has a lot of money attached to it, but you know you shouldn't take it because you have to work for a tyrant, right? That would be tantalizing. And you might be tempted to take it, but it's usually used as an adjective. Whereas if we say lure, lure is more often used as a verb. We can say it is allure, right? Usually if we use it as an adjective, we'll say alluring, very alluring. But we wouldn't use that for that job offer situation, probably. Usually lure is going to be used as a verb, as a verb. Yeah. That's a, I mean, it's a good question. It's just that tantalizing is so... Uh, rare. It's very rare. It's extremely rare. Not a common word. Uh, sure. No problem. All right. Any other questions that I missed, guys? No, no, no. Difference between this and M. I don't think I've missed any. Other than the grammar book question, which I just don't have a, I don't have an answer to the grammar question, unfortunately. All right. Uh, oh, someone says, how should I pronounce really? Uh, the correct pronunciation is r e li, really, 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 not really, really, no, really, really. It's a two-syllable word. Two syllables. Two syllables. Carrie, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Just doing a Zeki, hi. All right, guys, well, it works like this. When we do the Q&A part, we've got to do the Q&A part. Um, yeah, sure thing, Mohammed. Otherwise, we're done for the day. Okay, well, thanks for all the questions. Guys, get your questions ready for the next one. Uh, we'll probably do another one early next week, probably Monday or Tuesday. So get your questions ready, and I would be more than happy to answer them. Uh, uh, basically, I try to do the questions as long as you, as long as people have them. If you guys don't really have questions, then 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 I've got nothing to talk about, right? So get them ready. Get them ready. Okay. Uh, Ahmed says, how should I pronounce unfortunately? Unfortunately. We don't usually say netly. We say net with a stop. Unfortunately. Netly. Unfortunately. Like that. Like that. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thanks again. Thanks for all the questions. Again, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I got to say it one more time. The deal thing is happening uh, it's in the link in the description. I think there are about 10 left, something like that. It It is for all of my courses, all 10 courses, 
the price is much, much cheaper than uh, it, it usually is. I meant to put them on sale for one amount, and they I accidentally put them on sale for more than that amount. The coupon has already been created, so it's there. So I can say they will never be this cheap again, ever. So if you were thinking about picking up the courses, now is the time to do it. Take advantage of my mistakes and uh, grab the courses. <laughs> Bad for me, good for you. Bad for me, good for you. All right, guys. Uh, do you know the next live theme? I don't. I decide. I decide two hours beforehand. <laughs> All right. Get your questions ready for next time, guys. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one. See you next time. See you next time. Bye bye.